Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to part 13 of our Unity Beginners Tutorial Series. It's super awesome to have you back and I hope you're all enjoying working on your projects wherever you are in the world and keeping healthy and safe. In this video we're going to finalise our enemies which we successfully added into our game in the previous video by adjusting their collision behaviour using layer masks and compound colliders to make them a real threat to our player. However, before we crack on, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to visit and support us here at Expat Studios as we've achieved our one goal of 100 subscribers and we couldn't have done it without you. Thank you very much. Expect a celebration video very soon, but enough talk, onto the project. First off, as mentioned in the last video, a raycast is an invisible beam which requires a fair bit of guesswork with regards to setting our ray length as it's difficult to work with and judge the length of that which you can't see. And if your rays are too short, not making contact, our enemies will act wild and out of control. But don't worry, to make it easier, we can add a debug line just beneath our ray cast highlighted on screen that will draw the line of our ray, which we can see in our scene view. To do this, we simply say, debug.drawRay, so draw our ray. Inside the brackets, we're going to write information to match that which is in our ray. So our contact checker.position, where we're we drawing our line from, vector two dot down to match the direction of our ray. Multiply that by our ray length. And at the end, we can add a color. We've gone for color.red. If you're going to write this in the ground patrol, of course, our vector two direction is left, not down. So just make sure that those match in both brackets there. Once you've done that, when you hit play in our scene view, we can now see the line that is our ray to make sure that it is making contact and we can clearly see the length of it. Obviously on our orange guy, it's only tiny, but if we zoomed in close enough, we will be able to see it. All right, let's crack on. Now let's address the issue we're gonna have with our enemies. As you can see, our orange enemies here, they will react and turn direction whenever their ray cast hits another collider, including our player. And we don't want our enemies to turn and run from our player, we want them to hit. Our red enemies, however, aren't affected by this as their ray casts are concerned when they're not hitting something, but their colliders are preventing them from passing through each other. We can stop these things from happening quite easily, so let's first address our orange guy, our grounded enemies, for we can decide which objects colliders our ray casts react with through using what's called a layer mask, which refers to our layers in our layer manager in the corner here. We want our ray casts to ignore our player's collider. So let's assign a new layer and give it to our player, our player layer. Hit add layer. You can see we've used this feature before for ground. So in layer nine, name it player. Then select your player, layer, player layer, and say yes, change children as well. Then, once that's ready, let's open up our ground patroller script. So how do we create a layer mask? What do we need? First, we need to say which layer we want to use, the layer we're interested in, by its index, its number in the layers manager. We know that our player layer is layer number nine. So for that, let's write an integer. So at the top here, above our raycast, let's type in int, Let's give our integer, our number, a name, and it's going to be our layer mask equals one. Then we're going to type two less than symbols to create what's called a bit shift, and then the number of the layer we want to use. But as it stands, our raycast will only affect this layer in this mask, our player layer. But we want it to ignore that layer. And to do that, we simply add an operator that will invert that mask, which will tell our raycast to affect every layer except our player layer. So underneath, 
let's type in our layer mask equals and we're going to use a symbol known as a tilde which means not is not and then follow it up with layer mask so not our layer mask our player layer then with that in place let's add our layer mask to the end of our raycast line here so after ray length comma layer mask and this is going to tell our raycast hey ignore this layer save that now let's go back and have a test once everything has updated and compiled hit play and we should see that when we get in front of our orange enemy on the ground the raycast will completely ignore our player's collider and he'll continue to run right into us excellent happy days all right let's go ahead and just update our platform patroller with the same lines of code just simply copy and paste into our platform patroller and then of course just add at the end once again our layer mask there we are job done let's go back into the editor now now the enemies won't run from our player we're going to address the problem with our red guys in a moment for now it's time to kill our player first let's create and assign a new tag for our enemies so in the tags manager up here add a new tag click the plus symbol i'm going to call it enemy give it a save then highlight both our enemies and assign the enemy tag to them excellent then we're going to open up our player controller script at the bottom of our script where it says on trigger enter 2d we're going to add another tag for our collider to recognize before we do though i want us to at the beginning add another open bracket and close bracket at the end then inside those last two we're going to punch in two vertical bars and we're going to open a new set of brackets and inside there we're going to repeat other dot game object dot tag equal to and then of course our enemy there we go so what we've done here is we've opened up a larger set of brackets at the end with two individual statements so if the other dot game object dot tag is equal to spike or if the other game object dot tag is equal to enemy so we've said either or so if we hit spike or enemy then of course it'll take a life and reset our position save that now let's go back in and put it to the test of course for the enemies to affect the player we need to change their colliders to triggers so highlight both the enemies click is trigger and this is going to cause a most unwanted problem hit play and see for yourself the colliders completely lose their physical properties and they fall through the level there is a fix for this as we're going to create what are called compound colliders let's go back into unity and sort this problem out this is happening because our colliders now are serving a different function normally colliders collide with another game object meaning they apply a force to each other making it a trigger allows the collider and uses the collider mechanics in order to detect when colliders overlap hence our on trigger enter 2d function so the solution is to stop our enemies falling through the floor we're going to create a child object and add a collider to it this is known as a compound collider so go ahead right click on any enemy create empty and we'll just call it collider there we are and rather than assign a fresh collider we already have one to use our main collider here so in the gear click it copy component go to our collider child object and where it says transform click the gear box again and paste component as new turn off is trigger and do the same for our orange enemy create an empty empty collider and once again just copy 
and paste our component as a new component for our child. Turn off trigger, and when you hit play now, you can see that our enemies are behaving as normal, and when we hit them, we lose a life. But as you saw there, he slowed down. That's because our trigger and our colliders are the same size. So let's go ahead and sort that out. All we have to do is make our collider smaller than our trigger or our trigger larger than our collider. So we're gonna just shrink our collider in at the sides. So let's zoom in, get a closer look, go on our collider, edit, and just pull it in at the sides. I'm gonna do it equal to the width for the eye, or just about, and do the same on our orange guy. Bring it in at the sides, there we go. So that's gonna give us much cleaner, sharper triggers. Unlike our orange guys, our red guys are only concerned when they're not hitting ground. Therefore, they won't trigger each other to turn around. However, our red guys are smart and they know how to pass through each other. And we're gonna do that just like we did with Raycast by using layers so that they ignore triggers on that enemy layer. So let's go ahead and do just that. So in our layer manager, add layer and layer 10 will be enemy. Go ahead and assign that to both our enemies, of course. There we go, yes to all. Then go to the top corner to edit, project settings, physics 2D, and you'll see at the bottom there, we have layer collision matrix. The layer collision matrix allows us to define and control which game objects can collide with which layers. For example, starting at the top here, we have our player, and our player will collide with all the checked boxes. As you can see, we have the important one there, ground, to control our grounded function. And of course, the player will not collide or interact with itself. The enemies, for example, are colliding with everything. Ground, the player, of course, to kill the player. And they will block each other's movement because enemies will react to enemies. So all we have to do is untick the enemy box. Let's go back into Unity. Let's duplicate an enemy, move him behind, and when we press play, we should see now. And there we go, rather than push each other around and block their movement, they'll just pass each other by. Let's hop back into Unity and take a deep breath because we are done for today, guys. I don't want to keep you too long. Of course, we have one last thing to solve for our enemies and that is to give them a little walking animation. And we will do that in the next video, as well as look at a means to stomp and kill our enemies. Thank you very much for joining me once again. I hope all is going well with your projects. And don't forget, if you have any questions, please feel free to hit us up on Twitter, or why not check out our Instagram to see more of the work we do. Your support means a great deal to us and we're thrilled to have reached our 100 sub goal. And for that, I seriously cannot thank you enough. Stay awesome, guys. Stay safe. And I will see you soon.